Solar Electric Part 2. Today we're going to try to demystify the installation of solar electric systems in a van, boat, tiny house, doesn't really matter. Uh, this is going to be a highly technical video. It's going to be more general concept and principles. Uh, if you want a highly technical video, go find somebody who's a, an electrical engineer because that is not me. I was intimidated when I first took on this project and I think today after watching this video we're going to demystify some of the, the the scary parts of doing this kind of install and uh yeah let's get into it so the first part of these builds is scaling your system it's understanding uh how much power you need how much power you can get all the different places you can get the power from how much sun are you going to see? How much uh, driving are you going to do? Uh, how big does the gauge of the wires have to... Uh, th all, this is the hardest part. Figuring out what scale of system you need and what are all the elements of that system. And this is where we're going to make it the most easy on ourselves as possible because the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to not do that part ourselves. We're going to find a company who does this professionally. Hopefully, they've got some kind of survey that we can fill out, and they're going to scale that system for us and make it work for the application that we have. Because everyone's needs and wants and possibilities are going to be different, and uh, no one can train you on how to do that. If they say, if you watch a video and they're like, here's how you scale your system. No, you, you, don't, you don't know enough if you're like me to be able to do that on your own. So I went with Light Harvest Solar and they gave me this uh, survey to take. And I just went through and how much space do I have on the roof of my van? What kind of appliances am I gonna have in this thing? What, how many times am I going to be driving versus how much time am I going to spend parked in the shade versus in the sun? Like all of this kind of thing, they're trying to glean out of this survey that you're, that you're taking, right? Just going to interrupt myself here for a little update. Light Harvest Solar saw the first video that I put out, the electrical preview video up here, and uh, they wanted to offer you guys a discount on anything that you might want from them. So... 5% off, which I mean could be uh, hundreds of dollars uh, on depending on the solar system that you uh, decide to get. But uh, just use the code uh, NOMADVAN on checkout and uh, yeah, 5% off. That's free money for you. You're welcome. Thank you, Light Harvest Solar. Links down in the description to their website, to the survey, to all of the pieces and parts that I have and show in this video, um, back to me, I guess. Then they're gonna give you an estimate, maybe some uh, options on you know uh, the, the really fancy versus the not so fancy version of this uh, particular thing. And you can review that. And then eventually you're gonna end up with a bunch of boxes and you'll need a comfortable work area to lay them out on so that you can lay out a mock-up i use the ping pong table in our garage you're also going to get these instruction sheets each of the major components is going to have a manual you won't want to read these but you will because you're being thorough and curious as you learn new things yeah they'll also come with a schematic which are just uh what connects to what in the solar build right so this is a, a knee bone is connected to the leg bone is connected to the hip bone is connected to etc. That it is not concerned with the actual physical layout of where those objects are in your van. A diagram actually shows the physical layout with all of the different pieces where they are in your van. So once we understand how those two different maps work, then we can really start laying out our build, and especially we can really start planning our build. 
So let's talk for a second about how we read this schematic. We have all of these devices, wires, and things laid out on this chart. And this solar panel and charge controller, for example, are connected by wires of different gauges, and they're labeled as such. We know which ones of these wires are positive and negative because they run to distribution or junction boxes labeled that way. We also have things like this fuse down here. That fuse is one of three, and it's not sitting next to the other three fuses that are in the same box that it's in, because this schematic is not concerned with the actual physical layout of how things are in this particular system. It's only concerned with what connects to what. Knowing these basic ideas allows you to create a layout for your solar system. Now what I've done is I've gotten all these components out of the box and just started deciding how they were going to be laid out in my van. We know from our schematic what needs to connect to what so we can lay them out and rearrange them as much as needed. I'm using painter's tape to mark out where my wire runs are going to go because once you start cutting wire you start limiting your options on that layout, right? Lord Vader, we're ready to uh, bring all systems online as soon as the negative distribution box is ready. Excellent. The negative distribution box is ready. Bring all systems online on my command. Uh, yeah, copy that. Ready on your command. The Death Star will soon be the ultimate power in the universe. Flip the switch. Copy that. Uh, um, you know that's not all true to the original canon of the trilogy, right? Uh I was just trying to do like a fan fiction alternate reality kind of a thing, you know? Uh, I'm just saying Luke would not be in the Death Star, and it was built by slave labor, mostly Wookiees, not stormtroopers. Slave Wookiees? I thought it was built by contractors. Contractors? No, that's misinformation from the movie Clerks. Are you getting your Star Wars facts from Jay and Silent Bob now? Also, it's a negative junction box? Not a negative distribution box. Kendra! Come get the dogs! I'm trying to make a video and they're messing it up! So anyway, once you have a layout you think will work for you, test a few items in the van and make sure they all fit the way that you expect from your mock-up. Next, I sketched out my layout so that I have a basic wiring diagram to use when I'm in the van. Then, I'm using a scrap piece of plywood here because I assume I'll be moving all of these pieces around several times, and I don't want to make a bunch of screw holes in my final full wood wall piece. With the main components in place, I drew the wiring runs again, just double checking that I have the right lengths of the correct gauge wire before cutting this expensive copper. There are two main types of connections for these main larger gauge wires, crimped and bolted connections, and then there's also a clamped connection. For both, you'll need to strip the insulation off the end. For the clamp connections, that's it. Just clamp them down. For the crimp connections, you'll need to take a special crimp tool. Mine came with my kit from Light Harvest Solar. And you hammer it to crimp it down, and then it's ready to bolt in place. Adjusting that layout so my wires have no more room. Most of the wires can be any lengths needed, but there is one special situation to keep in mind. The positive wires from your battery to the positive junction box need to be the exact same length. This ensures that the batteries are going to charge equally. These wires pass through these breakers right here, so I cut three equal lengths first, then I cut each to the correct length from the junction box to the breaker, and then from the breaker to the positive terminal of the battery. With that first positive battery cable in place, I just repeat the same thing with the other two positive battery cables. Now, these three red positive battery cables need to be the same overall length from that junction box to the batteries. Now, when it comes to do the negative battery cables, they also need to be the same length. Not the same length as the red ones, just the same length as each other. So here's where we get to with this layout. There's those breaker boxes for the positive. These two black and green boxes here are part of the Simmering monitoring system that will have its own video. Then we have the negative battery wires coming up into this junction box here. All of the negative from everything else is going into that ne negative junction box there. Did I get a power outage in three, two, one, boom. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Where was I? Uh, the rest of these wires coming from various places, going into the fuse box with our main inputs there. Uh, then we have the charge controller and the DC to DC controller. These aren't completely wired up yet, but that's not important. And here comes that power outage. Boom. Seriously, where's my beer?
Point is, so far so good, moving on. Now it's time to transfer all of my mock-up onto the half inch wall plywood piece. As I said in my foam build video, this is one of the few pieces of half inch plywood I use. So I'm just transferring the final layout, making a few minor tweaks as I do to make everything fit comfortably and not have any wires bending too sharply, etc. Start to add in some Romex there, but that's the AC system and that'll be on the next video. Now, despite this being the sixth or seventh time I've rearranged this, this is still not my final layout. So at this point, I have all the main components in place. This is the core of the system. With it in place, I can start working out and away from this core, distributing the electricity this system will generate and store for me. All of this stuff on the right, the fuse box, the four black and green Cimmerine shunts, those are all gonna change position. Don't be afraid to change the plan as you go. All ideas can always be better. One more slightly technical thing. Uh, you can get your power from your van uh, from three different places. Place number one, the sun, solar panel on the roof, right? Place number two, shore power, plugging uh, a, an electrical plug into your van and then plugging it into some other source of energy like a campsite or a house. The third way that you can get power is what's called DC to DC charging. And what this basically means is that in your car, you have an alternator. That alternator, after you start your car, is spinning with the engine and it creates electricity and it charges up your vehicle's batteries. That only takes a little bit of time. Uh, there's some power being used for some of your electrical accessories, etc. but let's uh, just forget about that for a second. Uh, there's a lot of extra power being generated by your alternator and that can be used to charge the batteries for your van. This is an extra thing that you have to have to do this, the DC to DC controller, uh, Victrons is called the Orion, but I, I almost didn't get one of these uh, because I didn't know how valuable it was going to be, I didn't know how much charge was, uh, you should get one of these. They are great and uh, especially if you're driving a lot, if you're driving on the daily or every couple of days, uh, a couple of hours can get you a lot of, of juice back into those batteries. It's pretty simple to hook up. Let's get into that part. Depending on your van and if you have a smart alternator or not, you can connect this wire to various places. But in my case with my 2021 Transit, I can connect this to this aux fuse box that's underneath the driver's seats. There's a few ports here that are already occupied, but the one that I'm interested in here because I only need a 40 amp fuse on it is this 60 amp yellowish one that's down here in the bottom. I'll connect it up right now and then I'll swap out that fuse later after I go pick one up at the auto parts store. Just finding a way to get that wire through the back of the seat there and up into this area, routing it through so it's not bent too sharply and then uh, find it a nut that fits on that bolt. I mean, uh, why, did, why couldn't that bolt have come with its, its, its own nut? Luckily, I've got a small hardware store worth of various bolts lying around to uh, uh, find the right one for that particular thread gauge. Back into the main area, and that DC to DC wire is wired into the main system. And, you know, for the most part, the main components of my DC system are done now. Up to this point, I've been putting the shrink insulation over the wires uh, at all of the crimp connections, but not heating the shrink yet. Later, uh, after I'm sure of everything, the heat gun comes out to seal that deal. But as for my main DC to DC components, here's one more look at what we have up to this point. Those battery cables coming up through the breakers, and then all the positive wires meet up at that junction box, and they spread out to their various main components and breakers. Then head over to the inverter. Up next, we'll get into this uh, distribution box and these two uh, project boxes, and we'll toss the whole power system up into the van. Hey, before you go, if you haven't already taken a tour of my van, Here's that preview right here. It'll turn into a link in just a second. Also, if you could give me a like or a subscribe, that would be amazing. Only you can help this channel grow. All I can do is put out the videos and hope that they make them to the audience that wants and needs them. Until then, we'll see you next time. Here's to long roads.